grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I just discovered my watch is 10 minutes slow for some reason. And, uh, <clears throat> better late than never, right? It is good to be here in the house of the Lord today and uh, good to see uh, some folks who haven't been able to be with us for a while. Glad to, um, glad to have you here this morning and I greet those who are uh, watching online with us this morning and please uh, let us know who you are and uh, that, you, that you're with us and be sure to um, enter in your prayer request so that we can address those later on in the service. Um, there is maybe just one one new thing in the on the back of the bulletin today. Um, there's in addition to those in-person meetings of um, folks in the United Methodist Church um, helping uh, congregations, local congregations, to understand what's going on with the disaffiliation of some churches and what the future of the church might be. There is a, an online webinar for those who aren't able to be at the in-person uh, meetings on Sunday afternoon. There's an online webinar for free that'll be on Wednesday, November 2nd. If you need uh, help signing up for that, um, let me know and I'll be happy to, to help you out. Um, and I would um, just encourage you to continue giving to Brogdon. We, we found out last week that there are, or a week before, whenever, that there are 20 homeless children at Brogdon Middle School. That's a lot. And um, acts of mercy are definitely needed uh, where we, we send the food over and there's a flyer out there with a list. It's printed here in the bulletin if you didn't get a flyer. Uh, of the foods that are needed um, and there's got two lists going things that um, students need during the day to snack on um, and, and and then there's another list of things that they can take home with them wherever home is for that night a hotel room or a shelter or wherever um, I hope it's not a car I hope it's not under a bridge um, but things that with pop tops, you know, easy, easy to, to manage, easy to eat, and microwavable items uh, could be helpful as well. So um, let's be as generous as we can, and let, let's pray about the, the justice aspect of that as well. What acts of justice are needed to um, address homelessness in, here in Durham? It's a lot tough, tougher question. It's a lot harder to, uh, a problem that's a lot harder to solve, it requires um, lots of conversation with, with lots of folks. Um, it's not just something one church can sit inside and talk about and raise up and fix. Um, but we can participate in these, these acts of mercy in the meantime. Um, I would also like to encourage you um, to be mindful that we are coming up on flu season and the, the doctors are saying that there's um, like a, a triple surge going on out there now with regular flu, um, with COVID, and with this respiratory virus. Um, people, after having been inside for a couple of years, not as exposed in the public, um, defenses are down a little bit. So there could be an upsurge in sickness. So, and they're also noticing that some of the older folks are not getting their boosters. So would encourage everybody to stay up to date with all that and um, take care of yourself, take care of the loved ones around you, and um, just do what you can to uh, keep yourself healthy. Any other announcements? Just a couple. Thank you. Um, thank you to everyone who was able to come over to our house for our just celebration of being a church and just spending time together, getting to know each other better. Um, and those of you that who weren't able to come, you know, we'll be doing it again because I think it was just a lovely chance to calmly spend time together. And we even got to see two celebrities on their way to a fabulous gala. Um, so the other announcement I have for today is that uh, Ingrid and Cynthia and I and the Durham Children's uh, Preschool, Community Preschool, uh, we've been in conversation, and we're going to make a, a collection um, through maybe end of November for the North Carolina Diaper Bank. Uh, as you may or may not know, people who are on food stamps or the WIC program, that does not cover 
diapers, it doesn't cover feminine hygiene, and it doesn't cover adult diapers. And the food, uh, the Diaper Bank of North Carolina is on Club Boulevard. They repackage. So if you buy a big thing, they repackage into groups of 10. If you have something at your house, diapers for a grandchild, something that didn't work for you, you can bring already opened packages of unused items, obviously. And they'll take them and repackage. It's a chance for us to work with the preschool as well on a shared mission project. Um, that was one of our goals when they um, started renting from us was that we could build community with them and then COVID came. So um, if you have any questions, if you'll f feel free to talk to Ingrid, me or to Cynthia, but um, that's something that we can do for another group of people that are in need. Thank you. I invite you now to begin preparing your hearts and minds for worship. Um, as you settle in, take a few deep breaths and begin to let distractions fall away, let your cares and your burdens um, be placed at the foot of the cross, enter deeply into the silence and the stillness of this place. Let us humble ourselves before God, who through Christ gave us the example of true humility and righteousness. <laughs> I invite you to please rise in body or in spirit as we join together in the call to worship.
serving another church in the evenings on Sundays, and they have a different order of worship. And I'm doing the same thing with them, <laughs> messing up the order of worship. So my apologies. Let us join together in the call to worship. Praise is due to you, O God, you who answer prayer. Happy are we to be in your holy temple. By your goodness we are satisfied. You are the hope of all things, Holy One, from the ends of the earth to the farthest seas. You make the evening and the morning shout for joy. Rejoice in God, you people, and be glad. Let us shout and sing together for joy. Let us pray. God of possibility and imagination. As we gather this morning, we ask that you would open our hearts to your purposes and possibilities. Pour out your spirit on us that we might speak your truth, dream your dreams, and see what you see. This we pray in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let's join together in our opening hymn, number 2130, in your little black hymnal. seated. We have a number of uh, concerns this morning. Um, D. Tucker is hospitalized at um, Duke University Medical Center with a broken pelvis after a fall uh, last week. Um, I was able to visit with her and uh, she's in good spirits, doing pretty well. And we'll be moving to Crowsdale for rehab on Monday. And she hopes that you will go and visit her. She wanted uh, Sid and Emily to, to know that she's going to be there and uh, welcomes, welcomes your visits. It sounds like it's going to be a couple of months um, of healing. 
because you can't put a cast on it, can't operate on it, all that stuff. So she just kind of has to take it easy for a couple of months. Uh, so we uh, surround her with our, our love and prayers. And Jackie Adams is at Duke Regional with pneumonia and don't have any more details about Jackie at this time. And I was able to speak to Liv Sandifer this week as well, and she's doing great. She's settled in at Carolina Reserve, and uh, she says as soon as she can convince Laura that she can take care of herself, that she hopes to, to move back to Emerald Pond. So um, she's uh, there at Carolina Reserve, I guess in an assisted living situation, as she continues to um, uh, recover from her hip surgery. Uh, we wanna lift up Ann Wells this morning as well. Um, her six-year-old grandson, Jacob, that she's mentioned before um, is, um, she told us before about his um, blood pressure problems. And they're thinking now that it might be due to a tumor on, uh, on his kidney or something like that. Um, could be benign, it could be cancer, but um, hopefully they're getting to the root of, of what might be causing his problems. And um, she just um, asked for continued prayers for him and for her daughter as well, who has uh, had to undergo um, some testing this week. So surround that whole family. Um, as she's mentioned, the three grandchildren are all special needs children and um, Anne, helps a lot with, with their care. So prayers for, for that whole family. Other joys or concerns that you lift up today? My goodness. So Cletus, Ronnie, and Brian. Okay. Very sorry for that much loss amongst your friends and acquaintances. James, uh, I have a celebration. Um, Angie has a birthday this week. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Which one, but it's the next one. <laughs> Oh, there you go. Okay, well, happy birthday to Angie. Um, if I could ask for continued prayers, my um, aunt's husband, my uncle, passed away this morning at 2.30 at Hawk Pavilion. Um, there was enough time for all of his family to get here from all over the country, so that's a blessing. And then prayers for my cousins as they are trying to move their mother, who is bed-bound, near one of them into a facility. So it's, there's still a lot of transition happening. So. Very sorry for that loss in, in your family. It's the Martin family. Other joys or concerns? Let us go to God in prayer. Merciful God, you are the strength of those who humbly confess their sin and place their hope in you. Save us from vain displays of righteousness and give us grace to keep faith with the true humility of our Lord Jesus Christ. Save us from our false assumptions about how the world should be and open our eyes to the wondrous grace of your realm. We praise you for sending us Jesus, our teacher and our deliverer, to model for us the way of love for the whole universe. We offer up our prayers of love on behalf of ourselves and, on our, and of our neighbors and on behalf of your creation and our fellow creatures. We ask that you would draw near to those who mourn this day um, after all the loss of this past week. And we pray that folks would feel your presence and um, be upheld by friends and family as they navigate through their grief. And we ask your healing touch for Dee and for Jackie, for Lib, and for Anne and all of her family, and that you would restore them to wholeness of body, mind, and spirit, and help those of us who love them and care for them to um, know how we can best be of good support. 
we lift up our friends across the street at Brogdon Middle School and um, ask that you would stir up in us compassion and generosity and imagination for ways that we can touch that situation of, of homelessness that's so prevalent across Durham, but um, especially right across the street from us. We know the solutions aren't easy, but we pray that you would give us the courage and the imagination to be part of some solution for those children. Merciful God, we ask that you would receive these prayers and all those prayers that remain unspoken in our hearts. We ask that you would pour out your strength and your courage upon us so that we may boldly work for these things that we've prayed for. We pray now as you taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
show me um, page 789. Praise is due to you, O God, in Zion. And to you shall vows be performed. To you who hear prayer, all flesh shall come because of their sins. When our transgressions prevail over us, you forgive them. Blessed are those whom you choose and bring near to dwell in their courts. We shall be satisfied with the goodness of your house, your holy temple. O oh, dread deeds, your answer us with deliverance, O oh, God of our salvation. Who is the hope of all the ends of the earth and of the farthest seas, who by your strength established the mountains, being girded with who steals the roaring of the seas, the roaring of their waves, the turmoil of the people. Oh, so that those who dwell at earth's furthest bonds are afraid at your signs. You make the morning and the evening resound with joy. You visit the earth and water it. You greatly enrich it. The river of God is Your water, it flows abundantly, settling its ridges, softening it with showers, and blessing its growth. You crown the year with your bounty, the drafts of your chariot drip with fatness. The pastures of the wilderness drip, the hills grind themselves with joy. The meadows clothe themselves with flocks, the valleys deck themselves with shout and sing together for joy. Alright, now if you could join me for Luke chapter 18 verses 9 through 14. He also told his parables to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and regarded others in contempt. Two men went up to the temple to pray. One of Pharisees and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee standing by himself was praying thus, God, I thank you that I am not like other people, thieves, roofs, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I, faint, mm, I fast trace a week. I give a tenth of all my income, but the tax collector standing far off would not even lift up his eyes to heaven, but was beating his breast and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his home justified rather than the other, for all who exalted themselves will be humbled, but all who humble themselves will be exalted. give thanks for the reading and hearing of that word. We're in fair season. I guess today's the last day of the North Carolina State Fair. Um, has anybody been to the fair this, this round? A couple of folks. Um, I, I didn't make it this time, but I remember my very first time going in the fun house. And I must have been, I don't know, four years old or so. And I was reluctant to go in. I was reluctant to go. It was dark. It was dark outside. And the fun house was in a trailer that was painted black. And on the inside, it was painted black. So it was kind of scary to enter in there. I couldn't see what was on the inside. And, but Daddy was behind me, kind of pushing me along. And got in through the door. And something jumped out immediately. Scared the pee wadding out of me. And Daddy continued nudging us along, nudging us along. There's some other scary things painted on the walls, and I thought, this is, there's nothing funny about this fun house, and I kept asking Daddy, you know, get us out of here, get us out of here, and he kept saying, it's okay, it's okay, just go ahead, just keep on going, and then towards the end there were these funny mirrors, that you know those mirrors that make, make you look way taller than you are, or way shorter than you are, or way wider than you are, or way thinner than you are, 
You, some of them make you look upside down, and some of them make you look all curvy like that, right? And that, that was startling at first, and that, that scared me a little bit. I had never seen myself like that. And then I realized this, this was what was funny about the fun house. I said, look, Daddy, I'm tall now, or I'm upside down, or I'm, look at me, I'm all bent and curvy. Um, this, this wasn't the usual image I had of myself, and it was not, not the quote-unquote right image, but seeing myself like that was kind of a comic relief after the, the dark and the scary journey that it took to get there, to those funhouse mirrors. Now, I wonder if you can imagine with me the gospel in the light of that entrance into darkness and that encounter with those funhouse mirrors. Now this passage that Ingrid just read to us from the Gospel of Luke presents us with a couple of characters who see themselves in very different ways. There's a Pharisee who enjoys plenty of status and respect in the Jewish community. He's a religious official who is an expert on the religious laws and was scrupulous in keeping the laws. He was straight as an arrow. And when he goes to the temple to pray, he goes in and he stands by himself and proceeds to tell God how righteous he is. And he heaps contempt on these others who are not like him, especially the tax collector who we can see outside the temple praying. Now the tax collector is the lowest of the low. The Roman emperor needed lots of money to keep the empire running and to fund his lavish lifestyle and to keep up his army so he could keep on grasping and conquering all around the world. So he made demands of the kings and the governors, and the kings and the governors made demands of the local officials, and on down the line until it came to the one who actually had to collect the money from the individual citizens. So the tax collector was under great pressure to collect what the emperor demanded. And the tax collector, in turn, pressured and threatened the citizens to cough up their taxes. And when he goes to the temple to pray, he can't actually go in. He has to stand far off because of his despised status in the community. When he prays, the tax collector doesn't even dare raise his eyes to heaven like the Pharisee did. He beats his breast and tells God how bad he is, and he begs for mercy. He imagined that he must have come to the realization of how oppressive and corrupt the system was, and that he was just a pawn of the emperor, and he was abusing his own fellow Jews just as the Roman officials were abusing him. Tax collectors in a dark place. He calls out for mercy. The scriptures tell us that he went down to his home justified, made righteous, and made upright. But he was justified not by his good deeds or by his perfect image or by his high status, but by the confession that he saw himself as a crooked sinner and, and by the realization that the way of the Roman Empire was not the way of the God to whom he was praying tax collector was justified by his realization that he was completely dependent on the mercy of God. So the tax, tax collector could say was sort of like me looking in that funhouse mirror and calling out, look daddy, I'm all bent and curvy. Now, the tax collector wasn't exactly laughing at himself like we might if we were looking in a funhouse mirror in that situation, but he was honest with God about the flaws that he saw in himself. The Pharisee saw himself as a fine, upstanding citizen and put himself up on a pedestal and already righteous in his own eyes. The tax collector, in lowering himself to a place of humility, was raised up to righteousness by the grace and the mercy of God. That's kind of the opposite of what was expected in that day and time. Kind of the opposite of what's expected in our day and time. But that's how it is in the realm of God. God's way, the realm of God, is more like a funhouse mirror. Things are way different from many of the false assumptions that we have about the way things should be in the world. In the realm of God, down is up, up is down, wide is narrow, narrow is wide, short is tall, tall is short. 
Nothing looks like what we're used to or what we've come to believe is really the way things are or are supposed to be. In the realm of empire, we can't imagine a crooked sinner like the tax collector being justified. In the realm of empire, we can't imagine that being humble is the way to salvation. In the realm of empire, we can't imagine that going down is the way up. But that's precisely what Jesus is teaching us in this parable. It's what he teaches us throughout the Gospels, both in his sermons and by his own behavior. He's teaching in the context of the rule of the Roman Empire, which was known for its excesses and for its corruption, a violent and greedy and exploitative, oppressive government that took what it wanted by force and by manipulation, and it demanded obedience and worship of the emperor. So Jesus sets out to teach the ways of God's realm in contrast to the ways of empire. It starts with the temptation in the desert when he rejects everything that the devil offers him. The chance to be popular by turning stones into bread and giving people what they want. The chance to be wealthy and powerful by taking over all the kingdoms of the world. And the chance to be influential and in control by and, and dazzling the crowds by a superhero feat of jumping off the roof of the temple. Jesus rejects all this and instead humbly trusts in God and in God's mercy. And then Jesus teaches us through his first big sermon, the Sermon on the Mount from Matthew 5, the Beatitudes. He teaches us that, the bless, that blessed are the poor, the blessed are those who mourn, that the blessed are the meek and the hungry and the thirsty and the merciful the pure in heart, the peacemakers. It teaches us clearly that what's important to Jesus is the opposite of everything that the devil was offering him and opposite from the ways of empire. And then near the end of his ministry in the Gospel of John, Jesus performs an act of profound humility when he, the teacher and the master, washes the feet of his disciples. He takes on the role of a lowly servant. And then finally, in the ultimate act of humility and sacrifice, Jesus, who could have called in legions of angels to save him, refuses to engage with the violence and the power of the empire and refuses to engage with the violence and the power of the religious officials. And he submits to beating and mockery and death on a cross. And all that began in the very first place with God coming down, coming down to become flesh and to dwell among us here on earth. And through his humility, Jesus was exalted. Jesus was raised up. Friends, the way down involves letting go of our self-image as people who are upright, as people who are saved by our good deeds or saved by our social or economic status or saved by our religious identity or saved by how hard we work at our job. But we don't want to go down. We're afraid we'll never get back up, right? We don't want to go into those dark places. We're afraid of what we might encounter. We don't want to see ourselves as we are, all bent and curvy. But there is an upside to this going down. When we do go down and find ourselves in a dark place, with the Holy Spirit nudging us along, and with God's grace going before us, when we finally do look in that funhouse mirror and see ourselves in the upside-down, inside-out world of the realm of God. It can be startling. It can be scary for a second. But ultimately, it's a relief. We can see ourselves for who we are, imperfect and flawed, bent and curvy, in need of mercy and justification, and yet still loved and cherished by God. God does not look down on us like the Pharisee in this passage. 
God does not measure us by our righteousness and our good deeds. God looks at us with all our flaws and imperfections. He sees us, and he uses these flaws and imperfections and uses them to liberate us, to transform us, and to heal us. So may God give us all the humility to go down, to look in the mirror, and to ask for God's mercy that we might be raised up in glory. Amen. I invite you now to please rise in body or in spirit as we join together in number 2025 in your little black hymnal. join now in the Apostles' Creed as it's found on page 881 in your hymnals. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. seated. Yours, Yours, O Lord, are the greatness, the power, the glory, the victory, and the majesty, for all that is in the heavens and on the earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom, O Lord, and you are exalted as head above all. Let us humbly return to our exalted head those gifts which he first bestowed on us.
us pray. Holy God, we thank you for your goodness and mercy. You restore us to right relationship with you and give us eyes to see the world through your eyes. In gratitude for the abundant blessings in our lives, we joyfully contribute to the work you're doing through the mission of this church. Use these gifts to uplift people in our community and the world through the presence of Christ your Son. Amen. I invite you to remain standing for our sending hymn, number 337. Brothers and sisters, go forth this week with kingdom eyes, with, with eyes of the realm of God that um, have looked in that funhouse mirror and been able to laugh and to ask and accept God's mercy. So go in peace, go with the love of God, with the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and the companionship of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Thank you.